Hey folks, welcome back. So in episode one, we visited a timber rattlesnake gestating site in New York to gauge how many gravid snakes there might be at this location this year. If some of you recall, we found several rattlesnakes, but I only think one or maybe two of these were actually pregnant. The highlight, in fact, was finding this handsome large male. Now in this episode, we begin by visiting a second gestating site on a lower ridge. Okay, so as you can see, we have moved away from that other gestating site, coming up to another one. It's actually a week later, didn't have time last week to visit this one. Unfortunately, unlike last Sunday, which was overcast and barely 70 degrees, it is mostly clear in the upper 80s already at noon time. So any snakes that are at this gestating site will unfortunately or most of them will be deep under the rocks, but we may get a few under the bushes. All right, so I, I see one. I see two. I don't know if they're gravid yet. Actually, one. there's one on the right side of the rock. We'll get closer here in a, in a minute. So this one is definitely gravid. Not sure about that yellow one behind her. This yellow one actually looks like it's a sub-adult. Uh, maybe not. I don't think it's gravid though, it's in shed. So here's a good illustration of this yellow one. Utilizing the same rock, but for different reasons. A short distance from the gestating rock was this partial snake skeleton. Since there are no other large snakes in this particular area of New York, these vertebrae and ribs likely belong to a timber rattlesnake. The cause of its demise is anyone's guess, but I do encounter such remains now and again. All right, here's another reliable rock. A shed, maybe a couple weeks old. I can barely make one out underneath there, but it is, she is way, assuming it's a gravid female, way underneath there. Taking a peek under the rock with a flashlight, I could see that this snake was at least in shed, but I could not confirm if it was a gravid female. Not a good day for viewing when it's this hot. They like it so they can stay hidden and keep their body temperature in the 80s, but stay sheltered. The surface of this rock right now is probably 115 degrees, but deep underneath there, it's in the 80s. All right, so this is the main gestating rock. There's gonna be nothing out because it's really hot right now. But they do have access under this slab. Yeah, I see scales. Uh, for a second there, I thought that was a neonate, but it looks like there's a yearling. And there's one, two, three, four rattlesnakes here. Definitely there's a huge gravid one there. I think that is the yellow one back there. Okay, so these snakes are tucked under there deep. I'm gonna set up a couple GoPros on time-lapse and we'll see what we can capture. All right, so I'm gonna to have to make a decision over the next couple Sundays whether I wanna spend the majority of my time here or all of it here or on that ridge behind this row of chestnut oak. And that is where the first gestating site is located that we visited last Sunday. Now, if I'm really ambitious, I can try to hike from that ridge to here, but it's carrying a lot of weight and I'm doing time-lapse and everything else. It eats away at most of the, most of the day, but I'll make that decision which is also dependent on weather. I'll make that decision over the next week or so. But for now, I need to hike out on this very hot late August afternoon. Hey 
just started hiking down off that ridge and a few feet in front of me we just found this large looks like a male look at this now I suspect he's not in ambush mode right now but these two logs right here it is suggestive that he was either in ambush mode earlier or is getting ready to situate himself and what they do is they'll rest their head perpendicular to these logs which are often are runways for rodents especially chipmunks squirrels and deer mice and they'll find a log they'll, they'll scent a log to see which one is active and has been used recently and they'll position themselves in an ambush mode sometimes for upwards of two maybe even three days so this is this is really a, a neat find um, he's checking me out now I'm moving my hand so that's what he's attracted to is the movement you may be curious what are the chances of accidentally stepping on a rattlesnake while out hiking personally it has only happened to me once or I should clarify, literally tripped over one that was hidden and presumably napping in dense matted grass. Here is that snake in question, out in the open and relaxed after initially startling the both of us. On a recent trip to Pennsylvania, I came real close to stepping on a very well camouflaged northern copperhead. Thankfully, most of the time, copperheads and timber rattlesnakes that are on the surface position themselves tied up against a rock or log or are under dense vegetation such as a bush so someone hiking in the immediate area will end up stepping over or around an unsuspecting snake but as the two previous encounters illustrate one should always be cautious while hiking in rattlesnake and or copperhead country eventually our large but very complacent male continued on his way so stay tuned for episode three especially you lamb as we return to the area and hopefully encounter a new generation of timber rattlesnakes.